In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement a stack using an array, and we're going to take a look at the code in Java. First of all, what exactly is a stack? So let's imagine that we have a box. We put book A into the box, and then we put book B on top of book A, and then we put C on top of B, and D on top of C. So now we have a stack of books. Notice that if we want to get A outside of the box, we need to remove the other books. So we remove D, we remove C, we remove B, and now we have A, so we can take A outside of the box. So stacks have a property called first in, last out. A is the first one to go into the stack, and A is the last one to go outside of the stack. So that's what first in, last out means. And just remember, when we put into the box, it's called push. And when we take outside of the box, it is called pop. Stacks are very useful in real life. Imagine that you were building a chess game. So when you make a move, you would push into the stack. And when you want to undo a move, you would look at what is the previous move you made. So you would pop it outside of the stack and basically undo the move that you made. How can we implement a stack using an array? So let's say we have an array of size 3, and we initialize top to be at index 0. So when the top is at index 0, we know that the stack is empty. And let's try to push the letter A into the stack. It's very easy. So wherever top is, we just put A into the array. And then we increment top to move it to the right. How about push B? Again, we put it into wherever top is, so we put B here, and then we increment top. This means that the number of elements inside the stack is equal to top. So when top is equal to 2, we know that there are two elements inside a stack, which are A and B. Let's push C. So C goes here, and we increment top, and then we push D. So what's going to happen now? we need to add more space into the array. So at the moment, the size of the array is 3. We take 3 times 2, which gives us 6. So now we create an array of size 6. We put D into the top, and then we increment top. And don't worry, I'm going to show you the code to explain how this all works in a moment. But let's try to pop and see what happens. So when we pop the stack, we do the exact opposite. We move top to the left, and then we empty the slot by setting this to null. Let's pop again. We move top to the left, and we empty the slot. Let's pop again, top to the left, and empty B. Let's do it one last time, so pop. We decrement top, and we set A to null. And if we pop again, we know that the stack is empty when top is equal to zero. So in this case, pop would not do anything. So far, we have covered push, we have covered pop, and there's one more function that I want to introduce to you, and it's called peek. Peek just means you look into the box and see what is on top of the stack. So what is the top of the stack at the moment? It's going to be D. So peek will just return D. It's very simple. Peak will not add into the stack, it will not remove from the stack, it will just get whatever is on top of the stack. If you try to peak when the stack is empty, then peak wouldn't do anything because there's no element at the top, so peak will just return null. What we're going to do next is look at the code in Java to implement a stack using an array. Let's take a look at the stack interface. So we have stack, and this is called the generic data type, and it's very simple. It's basically saying we can create a stack of only integers, a stack of only strings, or a stack of a different object that you create. And the methods for stack are is empty, get the size, or check how many elements are inside the stack at the moment, pushing some data into the stack, pop, peek, and display the stack. Next, we have the array stack class that will implement the methods inside the stack. Remember from our example that we initially created an array with size 3. So that's the default capacity, and you can increase it to a different number if you like. And then we create the array, and the top is set to index 0. 
And here is our constructor. When we call array stack, it will allocate some space to the array. So we will allocate three slots to the array. However, if you want to create the stack with a different size than the default capacity, let's say you want instead of three, you want to create a stack with size 10. Then we also have another constructor. We pass in 10 and it will create an array with 10 slots. Let's implement the other methods and put them below the public array in capacity method. Remember when the stack is empty, top will be equal to zero. So all we have to do is return top equal to zero. This is all of one. How about get size? The number of elements inside the stack is equal to the top. So if we have A and B, we have two elements, then top will be equal to two. So we just return top and this is also all of one. Now the push method. So let's take a look at this example again. The top is equal to one and the array length is equal to three. So top is not equal to array length. We're going to ignore the if statement and jump to here. So in this case scenario, we put the data or B into the slot where top is at. So we put B here and then we increment top. The second case scenario is when our array is already full. So as you can see, the array length is three and top is also three. So now we're considering this if statement. We will create a new array and the new array will have double the size. So this is size three and this new array will have size six. Then this for loop will traverse through our original array and it will copy into the new array. Then the next step is actually really important. We set array equal to the new array. So this is now our array. And because this array does not have a variable set to it, or it doesn't have an owner, then this array will be automatically put into the garbage collection by Java. So it will be automatically deleted. And as you can see, top is still three. Now, array top equals data means we put D into this slot, and then we move top to the right. So obviously the push method is all of N because of this for loop here, you're copying the data from the original array into the new one, where n is the array length. How about peak? When the stack is empty, all peak does is it returns null. But if there are some elements inside the stack, for example, in this case, we want to return d, and this is the top. So we need to return array at index top minus one. Pop is quite similar. So if the stack is empty, we just return null. But if the stack is not empty, then we move top to the left. So that's top minus minus. We move top to the left. And then we have a variable called save. We put C into the variable save. So that's this line here. And then we need to set this slot to null to empty it. And the last step is just return the variable saved. Display is very intuitive. We're going to print out the variable top and then we print out the stack. Then we loop through the array and print out each element inside the stack. Finally, we create main.java and we have the main function. We create a stack of strings. And in the example, I know I push only a single letter, but you can also push in entire strings, such as the string hello. And this is how you use the display, the push, peek, and pop methods. And instead of strings, you can also use integers, but just remember that just make sure that you are pushing in integers and not strings. And that's basically it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And also check out my data structures and algorithms playlist where I make videos like stacks, queues, selection sort, and other topics.